Hi, my name is Jeffrey Custis. I'm the CTO at ITQ. And today I want to spend a couple of minutes to talk about a new external storage option for VMware Cloud and AWS. Um, before we dive into the specifics of this uh, service, let's briefly go over uh, VMC on AWS and see what the service is all about. So as you can see here, I already prepared a, uh, a drawing. On this side, you can see um, basically the, the setup of VMware Cloud AWS. So we have a fully managed VMware software-defined data center, which is being delivered uh, from the AWS global infrastructure, and it's fully managed by VMware. It has a management component, so you typically run vCenter, Server, NSX, and vSAN. These are your hyper-converged uh, infrastructure uh, elements of VMC, and you have a uh, compute or a workload domain where you can run your workloads. Now, when we look at sizing and scalability of a hyperconverged infrastructure, what we typically see is that uh, the beauty of uh, hyperconverged infrastructure is, of course, being able to linearly scale. So, as your compute, network, and storage um, requirements uh, change over the years or over the over the periods then you can linearly scale by adding additional hosts. And this is a wonderful way of scaling your data center or your cloud infrastructure. But what happens when you have a very storage heavy uh, workload or where the storage requirement is much more heavy compared to uh, this, the scaling of CPU and RAM in this case? That's why we typically see, even in hyperconverged infrastructures, that many companies are adding a secondary or secondary tier of storage. Now, within VMware Cloud and AWS, that was not possible until uh, reInvent 2021, where AWS and VMware announced that they should now support it, uh, Amazon FSX for NetApp ONTAP, which we'll call FSXN in, this, uh, in the rest of the video. And this is an external storage option, which is now capable of delivering highly scalable, high-performance storage to your VMware Cloud and AWS uh, environment. So what is this service all about? Let's first start by explaining what Amazon FSX is. So Amazon FSX is a highly scalable, uh, fully featured uh, version of NetApp ONTAP, which is a uh, reliable and trusty uh, storage system that has been around for many, many years. And many data centers around the world run that storage system. Um, Amazon FSX for NetApp ONTAP is a fully managed version of that same operating system for storage, that same, same storage solution. Um, it is capable of doing all the stuff that we can do on NetApp systems on-premises in data centers. So think as, about stuff as SnapMirror, um, doing clones, doing uh, all kinds of feature-rich feature, uh, feature -rich storage capabilities. You can even do stretching across multiple data centers, which I've prepared here. And of course, in Amazon terms, that is a uh, stretching across availability zones. So we can stretch the FSX and service across two availability zones. That means that there is a synchronous data replication or a snap mirror in NetApp terms um, going on between both sides. And there is primary storage and secondary storage. And as soon as something happens with the availability of the system in availability zone one, there will be a instant failover to availability zone two. So with that uh, solution, we can provide a availability uptime of four nines. Now, as I already mentioned, you can do all the stuff with uh, snap clones or flex clones. Um, you can do snap mirror, as I mentioned. And you also have the full RESTful API of the ONTAP um, operating system, which means that when you standardize uh, your storage uh, operations and storage administration on, uh, on NetApp ONTAP, as you did on-prem, you can 
very easily and seamlessly extend those capabilities into VMware Cloud now. Now, this is basically what NetApp ONTAP is. So uh, what's good to know is that it has a, uh, it is of course backed by Amazon's uh, scalable file systems. So when you look at uh, FSXN, then it basically uh, is made up out of a hot tier uh, or a flash tier, whatever you want to call it, which is backed by EBS, Elastic Block Storage. Um, that is Amazon's highly scalable block storage uh, system. And there's a capacity tier or a secondary tier, whatever you want to call it, which is backed by S3. So S3 and EBS bring the raw storage and then Amazon provides a fully managed on-tap operating system on top of these systems. Now, how does this now relate to VMware Cloud and AWS? As we discussed before, many uh, sizing, um, uh, when we do sizing for VMware Cloud and AWS, there is a high storage constraint, so a very heavy storage um, a requirement, then we can now provide a secondary uh, data store or multiple data stores, which is backed by FSXN. So typically uh, you would use VCN as a primary storage, but now you can use um, FSXN as a secondary storage to run your VMs, your virtual machines, or store maybe specific VMDKs of, let's say, database service, which have a, a large footprint or, or similar use cases. So you can now use NFS or iSCSI, uh, to, uh, or iSCSI to present the, um, the data stores backed by FSXN. So connectivity is uh, arranged through the transit gateway. The transit gateway is what we use to connect multiple VPCs to each other. And what's good to know is that uh, VMware Cloud AWS is always running in a, in a VMware managed VPC inside of a VMware managed AWS account. Of course, when you run, uh, when you run FSXN, you will need to provide these services in your own VPC. So in a customer VPC inside of your own AWS customer account. These two are linked when you deploy your, um, um, your SDDC. Um, and that's where the, the, um, the communication between these VPC is being done. So we need a transit gateway to do that. Um, and to make the story complete, when you do a single availability zone deployment of FSXN, you can make the connection without the transit gateway. You can make a direct connection over the Elastic Network Interface, the ENI, into the SDDC. But typically, this is an enterprise-grade storage system. Typically, most customers would want to stretch that across two availability zones. This was how it was initially designed and, and deployed by, by Amazon and NetApp, uh, but they now also offer a single availability zone option as well. But in production environments, I, don't, I would not typically recommend these. So the Elastic Network Interface is then connected, of course, to the transit gateway. And this is how we set up end-to-end um, -end the data store being backed by FSXN. Now, this is still a relatively new service. It was in preview uh, until recently. I think it's available now in a number of regions, depending on what moment you're watching this video on. But this is, a, um, I think, a very, very good example of how VMware and AWS are joining forces and really co-engineering the VMware Cloud offering to make this uh, a, a well-designed and suitable uh, solution for practically every enterprise use case that you can think of. So if you want to know more, please reach out to your IDQ representative or to me personally. Um, thank you for watching and um, looking forward to meeting you at the next video. Thanks.